has to be a way out, rasped the solitary prisoner. Tapping the hyperdimensional synapses of the galactic array, he scanned the few data clusters still open to his mind. If he dug through the court transcript, he might find a flaw in the prosecution's case. Too bad he'd skipped the last six sessions of AP criminal law. He could have used some legal advice, even his own. Hopeless, the prisoner muttered, as despair seeped into every cell of his body. At a thousand pages, the transcript was a twisting labyrinth of slick legal jargon. Better to look away. Trouble was, with no distractions, he had nowhere to hide from his misery. Stuck in a Snaldrialoran transmog chamber, caught between the Chaham Drokar he knew and the hideous creature he'd see in the mirror tomorrow. His name was Ixtahan Deherik, and, when he wasn't in a coma, he was angry as a Glaurofrontrian guard dog between meals. Not that you could blame him. In spite of spine-racking pain, he couldn't even writhe. There wasn't enough left of his eight blue-gray tentacles for more than an anemic wriggle. Between muscle spasms, the humiliation of it stung hard. Lucky for Ixtahan, his mind had been safely uploaded to the ship's core processors. Yet the only thing on his mind at the moment were the court records, and they were seriously depressing. For his single act of treason, he'd been exiled to Hothria Dunar, a planet whose only sentient species was a tribe of ape-descended, gas-breathing bipeds. Barely a level two civilization, Ixtahan wailed into the semi-transparent transmog chamber that was, for now, inflicting a slightly less horrific form of agony on his three tricameral hearts. And to think... His ordeal had begun with a single file, downloaded illegally from the Ministry of Defense and sent off to the Vrakari Embassy. But in Ixtahan's mind, his only fault had been following family tradition. He'd never bothered himself with interstellar politics before, unlike his father Perturu or Thahaga de Herak, his great aunt. The diplomatic corps? Way too much responsibility. But in this case, the consequences had seemed too remote to burden his conscience. What did rumors of Rukari atrocities on distant worlds matter to him? What had mattered were the weeks of planning to steal father's security codes, then the endless waiting until the stupid old Pilarn went off-world on a diplomatic mission. Risky? Why worry about the risks? when the payoff included thousands of credits and entree into the subculture of foreign intrigue. And hadn't he been forced into action the moment father had cut his allowance in half? Merchant ships, hollow chambers, game rooms, the scion of Lansinga province had thundered. You're supposed to be preparing yourself for service to the home world. Ixtahan had kept silent, knowing nothing he could say, would make the slightest dent in father's rage. Listen carefully, Perturu had sneered. I refuse to finance your degenerate behavior. If you insist on wasting your life, you'll have to become more resourceful. Well, if selling state secrets wasn't being resourceful, nothing was. And what harm would it do? That gaggle of Rukari warlords could hardly stop drooling, let alone build a functioning transmog device. Besides, he'd told himself, if Ambassador Gar hadn't used Ixtahan, she would have found another agent. And what other agent was more deserving of her cold, hard credit tiles than the only remaining heir to House de Herrick? Yet now, it was Ixtahan who was bound for exile. No other agent had seen his rank and privilege shrunk to the three instances of Caldron Drogar, or personal preference, the ship's chronograph chimed, and the teenage son of Snaldrialor's most honored diplomat attempted to shake his head. The journey was already one-third over, and he still hadn't formulated an escape plan. Not that there weren't obstacles. Can't move, he grumbled, unable to close his eyes or scratch the itch he felt somewhere. It wasn't at all clear. 
For while the onboard navigation system was busy reassigning the ship's quantum signature, the transmog chamber continued to remap Ixtahan's genome with brutal efficiency. Taking a closer look at his case files, Ixtahan learned that the court-mandated transmog process included a full complement of adaptive memories and an integrated array of neuromuscular skills suitable to his new environment. Maybe that would make his new surroundings a bit less terrifying. And maybe it wouldn't. Desperate for any shred of comfort, he combed the court documents and discovered this. His planet of exile boasted two large oceans of liquid hydrogen oxide. Ironically, with his new body, he'd need a special breathing apparatus to explore them. Yet for all he knew, he'd never get near Earth's oceans. Instead of roaming free, Ixtahan would be supervised by a pair of robotic caretakers programmed to fulfill all necessary parental functions. Sacred mentality of the dark voids! How far he had fallen!